Hello and welcome. My name is Scott Offerman, sales trainer for Hino Trucks. The following video will help you safely operate your Hino truck. If you have any further questions, please refer to your owner's manual. Thank you. Today's modern commercial vehicles are equipped with many indicators and controls. A thorough understanding as to how they work is essential. As a driver of a Hino truck, it is important to read the owner's manual thoroughly. Following the operating instructions will ensure safe operation of your new Hino truck. A daily inspection should be performed by the driver before or after the day's operation in order to assure safe driving and to prevent problems on the road. Be sure that all necessary repairs, adjustments, and fluid checks have been completed before starting to drive. For detailed information about the maintenance of the vehicle, see Section 6 for maintenance requirements. In this video, the truck is considered to be on level ground with the parking brake set, the engine off, and at ambient temperature. To set the park brake, pull up on the lever. For better holding power, first depress the brake pedal and hold it while setting the parking brake. To release, pull the lever up slightly, press the lock release button and lower the lever. The park brake indicator light comes on when the parking brake is applied. A buzzer will sound if the truck is driven while the parking brake is still applied. The VIN label is affixed to the driver's side door pillar. When ordering replacement parts for your Hino truck, please inform the dealer of the VIN. The VIN is also stamped on the front right frame rail. Before cleaning the heater filter, be sure to turn off the fan. Remove the lower cover located near the floor on the passenger side. While pressing the tabs, pull on the filter. After cleaning the filter, replace in the reverse order of removal. To check the washer fluid level, simply look at the transparent tank. If the level is low, add washer fluid. Do not fill beyond the full line. Look at the see-through coolant reservoir when the engine is cold. The coolant level is satisfactory if it is between the full and low lines on the reservoir. If the level is low, add the appropriate coolant. To check the brake fluid level, remove the cover located on the left side of the instrument panel. If the fluid level is below or at the minimum mark, add to the max mark with the approved brake fluid stated in the owner's manual. Before lifting the cab, remove any articles in or on the cab and close the doors firmly. Pull the cab handle safety release toward you and lift up on the cab release handle. Then pull the cab release safety latch toward you while grasping the grip handle to hold the cab. Tilt the cab carefully until the prop rod is completely locked. The cab will automatically lock when it is fully tilted. Be sure to secure the prop rod stopper. To get a correct reading, the vehicle should be on level ground. After turning off the engine, wait a few minutes for the oil to drain back into the oil pan. Pull the dipstick out and wipe it clean. Reinsert the dipstick and push it in as far as it will go. Pull the dipstick out and look at the oil level. If low, fill to the appropriate level. Place the transmission in the parked position and allow the engine to idle. The engine needs to be at operating temperature. Remove the transmission dipstick and clean. Then reinstall the dipstick and check the fluid level again. The level should be at the cool mark. In order to maintain proper functioning of the DEF SCR system, always replenish the DEF tank immediately when the DEF light on the instrument cluster illuminates. Use a clean funnel for the replenishment of DEF and use API certified DEF only. Never replenish the tank with diesel fuel, kerosene, gasoline, or any other fluid. The hydraulic brake booster fluid level should be between the max and minimum lines. If the level is below the minimum line, add fluid up to the max line. Before adjusting the fluid level, press the brake pedal more than 10 times to zero the accumulator pressure. If the red line indicator ring appears in the air cleaner service indicator, replace the air cleaner element using Hino Genuine Parts. To remove the air cleaner filter, release the clips and remove the cover. Remove the filter element. 
inspect the surface of the filter. If it is dirty, it should be replaced. Be sure to check the tire inflation pressure during your daily inspection. While the tires are cold, inflate the tires to the proper cold pressure designated by the tire manufacturer. To turn the lights on, move the lever to the first position. The exterior lights and instrument lights will be illuminated, with the exception of the headlights. To turn on the headlights, turn the lever to the second position. For high beams, push the lever forward. Turn the key to on, but do not start the engine. All the service reminder indicators will illuminate. If an indicator illuminates while driving, contact your Hino dealer. This meter displays the odometer, two trip meters, along with current fuel consumption and average fuel consumption. This light comes on when the key is turned to the on position. If the anti-lock brake system works properly, the light turns off after a few seconds. If the system malfunctions, the light comes on again. The brake pad wear indicators on your disc brakes give a warning light when the brake pads are worn to the point where replacement is required. If the warning light comes on while driving, have the brake pads checked and replaced by your Hino dealer immediately. To operate the exhaust brake, pull the lever toward you. This will aid in braking when the accelerator pedal is released. The green indicator light on the instrument cluster shows the exhaust brake is ready for operation. Adjust the driver's seat so that the foot pedals, steering wheel, and instrument panel controls are within easy reach of the driver. To adjust the seat, pull the lever up and slide the seat to the desired position and release the lever. Lean forward and pull the seat back angle adjuster lever up and lean back to the desired angle, release the lever. To adjust the steering wheel position, pull up on the lock release lever. Then tilt the steering wheel to the desired angle. Push or pull it to the desired steering column length and push down on the lock release lever. With the key in the on position, select the rear view mirror left or right and adjust the angle by using the selector switch. The mirror heater is switched on when the switch is pressed. At the same time, the built-in indicator light illuminates. Press the switch again to switch off the heater element after the condensation or fogging has been removed. To operate the cruise control, turn on the main switch on the end of the lever. To set the cruise speed, move the lever down. To decrease the set speed, move the lever down. To increase the set speed, move the lever up. To cancel operation of the cruise control, pull the lever toward you. To turn the system off, push the main switch on the end of the lever. The idle up function can also be used by following the same operation as the cruise control, but with the vehicle's shift lever in the parked position. The fuel gauge indicates the approximate quantity of fuel remaining in the tank when the key is on. Refill the fuel tank before the gauge registers E or empty. The DEF gauge on the information display shows the approximate amount of DEF in the DEF tank. When the tank is full, eight indicator bars are lit. To start a manual regeneration, stop the vehicle in a safe place with the engine running. Place the selector lever in park or neutral and apply the parking brake. Push the blinking DPR manual regeneration switch in the center of the dash. The DPR indicator light and the switch light will remain illuminated during regeneration and the engine idle speed will increase. DPR manual regeneration will be completed in approximately 15 to 20 minutes and the lights will go off. The engine idle speed will return to normal when complete. The windshield wiper switch has four control positions. High, low, intermittent, and off. Select the switch position appropriate for the weather conditions. The engine block heater will keep the engine warm overnight during cold weather conditions. Simply plug an extension cord into the receptacle and connect to a 120 volt standard electrical outlet. From all of us at Hino, we want to say thank you for taking the time to better understand your Hino truck. Please remember to refer to the owner's manual or your local Hino dealer if you have any further questions.